Hi everybody. Today I would like to show you the squid farm that I've been using for the past couple of months. Uh, I've been really enjoying it. It really does crank out the ink sacks. Uh, it's impressive for just how simple this thing is to build. Uh, so I will show you what this is and then we will attempt a block by block tutorial uh, for how to go about building it. Just uh, maybe answer any questions you might have about how to get to, to this stage here. So, all that this farm is, is a single layer of bubble columns on the soul sand, and then some flowing water that directs the squid over here to this trap door uh, that's just sitting on top of the chains, and uh, they just slide underneath here, and the trident will kill them. Chant that with impaling and it will become a one-hit kill. Uh, we're just hard powering the soul lanterns here with their little comparator clock and to activate the tridents. And then all the drops will fall down our drop shoots here, get carried off to our storage. Because it is a player kill, you are gonna get experience as well. So if you decide that you just want to put a couple hoppers and some chests right here. Uh, only building one module, or just not going to deal with anything else. Uh, you can throw a campfire on top of that as well uh, to burn your experience. Uh, I do have the sea lanterns in the floor. You can use any uh, full block light source, glowstone, so jack o' lanterns, shroom lights, anything like that. Uh, that's to keep the drowns out of the farm. If you really want, you can let the drowns happen, but it, uh, they are just going to get in the way of the squid moving into the trident. Uh, so, as a squid farm, keep the lights in place in the center. The lights around the border, I just had them in place uh, while I was building the farm over a frozen ocean to help keep things from freezing. Uh, and I kind of like the look of them. So, come over here and I'll show you a little bit for how it ended up being that size. Get this guy banner. And now we've got a simulation for spawning sphere here. Uh, this pack is by Foxy No Tail. Um, but you can see that we're losing the corners here and we're just at the edge over here. Uh, so that's really as large as it can be made uh, while using split density. You could get a little bit more off of these edges, uh, but there's some diminishing returns with a longer distance towards the Trident Killer. Um, I'll show you here uh, just with the chunks, just to show you that uh, this is how you can find the chunks if you happen to have this pack or other similar packs that will show you chunk borders. Uh, there's resources on YouTube to help you find your chunks um, as well, or you could use chunk base. But the soul sand, when you're laying this thing out, you just want to make sure your soul sand is starting first block into this chunk. So that you have your full one, two, three, four chunks before you start getting into here. Because the mob cap for a squid is four and in a single spawning attempt you can get four squid, uh, you don't want to have this one to have four squid spawn and then stop that one from spawning. So uh, you really don't want any kind of an overlap in these two. And then your AFK spot, you need it to be as dead center as you can. It's an even number, so it's not gonna be perfect. Uh, but on either side of this chunk border between the middle two chunks will work for your AFK spot. Let's turn this thing on here real quick. And I'm going to turn my mob spawning on. Hand blocks there. And you should be able to see squid spawning here shortly. There go. Some squid spawning. One second here and I'll zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, there we go. Got my FOV changer turned on. So now you can see the squid spawning. 
pushed up. Water stream carries them right over the Trident Killer and down the drops go. And you should be hearing that we're starting to get some experience that's making its way over to us as well. Obviously keep your looting sword in your hand to get the best rates out of this. But just sit here in AFK get all the ink you can need. The rates for this when you do build both modules and you make sure that you're well up in the air so you're not uh, competing with any fish spawns and you're well lit so you're not competing with any drowned spawns is just about a double chest and a half of a, a single chest, so that's 4,200 ink sacks per hour on average. Uh, that was averaged out over a, a 10 hour AFK session, uh, and this is what you get on average in a single hour. It's a little bit over a double chest worth of ink. Okay, so I am going to go and turn off my. Uh, spawn spheres pack that way we can have a look at the structure that I'll include in the description uh, and go through building this pack so I uh, will return just a second okay so I've got that resource pack turned on now uh, I will leave it applied in the world for the world download so that you can play around with it um, but here we have our resource pack and I'm going to move my armor stand over we want this to be chunk aligned right here is the full pack I've got white glass marked in the walls to represent the spots along the second layer where you want to make sure you are not placing any water uh, these ones here are to make sure it flows towards drop shoot, and these ones here on either end are to make sure you don't flood the whole platform. Well, let's just uh, get started. Soul Sand. We're going to be building this thing here as though you're AFKing over on this side because it is a little off centered. Soul Sand is going to go 12 blocks out. 11, 12. And it's going to be 32 blocks long. One, do that first block that I had, and we've got 32. I am starting from this corner just because it's easier to count out. You don't have to align yourself to your AFK spot as long as you start on the chunk here. You can start from one farm and work your way out. You don't have to be aligned in this direction at all. Um, so it's not too critical. You don't have to panic about your coming from your AFK spot and need to figure out your balance. Just start building the platform and then line the other farm up with it and the other side, put your AFK spot in the middle. So let's just uh, run some field commands here. To, uh, speed up the build process. Okay, you put all your soul sand in, we'll start laying out where the lights are going to go. The lights are going to go on the third block, one, two, three, and one, two, three, go third block diagonally, and then every third block you're going to start placing your lights in. At your third block, if you go third block in again, that's your drop shoot. So from the center row, third block and a third block, and that's your drop shoot. It's on the third block and the center row. Carrying on, let's actually start from the uh, edge. Third block, and now the third block in from this end. One, two, three, or the third spot skipping every three blocks. This is our drop shoot. 
Now, you do want to make sure that you get your drop shoots, get your chain or iron bar or glass pane or whatever your, your single pillar is going to be. You can even, uh, just can't be end rods because water will flow through that. Um, you want to get that in before you go too far. Make sure that you don't accidentally end up flooding that because it'll just be a bit of a pain getting your, your water out of that once you place it in. And your last row of lights doesn't line up perfectly. You could put it here. My preference is to measure third block out from the outer edge again. Go. Now you're guaranteed you're not going to be getting drowns in here, so you're going to get the maximum rate out of your uh, squid spawns because every spawn attempt that will happen is going to be a squid spawn attempt. Uh, these ones here, do what you want around the border, make it a light source, don't make it a light source, that's up to you. Do what you want for decoration. And then you start placing your walls in. Glass would be preferable, just because uh, you're not risking losing some spawns right on the north or the west edge where they would intersect the glass. Uh, that would be a minimal impact though, so you are free to use whichever block you want, just to contain the water and to contain the squid. Uh, so for using the structure, you'll see you'll go up one, you'll get the glass in, fill you the walls the whole way around, so you could just go ahead and build your walls all the way up. Uh, and perhaps in survival, you'll want to put in some scaffolding or some gates or a door or something along the walls here so you can easily get in and out. Uh, and I have packed ice in here representing that as you're building this, you want to flood the entire bottom floor of the farm. And you'll see the chains are stopping the water, so you can just give it a little bit of a helping hand around the chains. Or place your water all the way around the outside. You can use blocks of ice, or you can use water sources. Whatever you prefer. Going up to the next level, see we've got our colored glass marking where we don't want to put our water. Let's get our walls in. Downsized using a structure with the glass, it's a little bit harder to see when you've got the glass in. Uh, but on the bright side, you will still be able to see which spots you don't want to put your sources. Now, you can't just go ahead and place that in because the water doesn't flow. Uh, so you need a temporary block in to allow the water to flow. You could set this water up first, putting full blocks in here. My personal preference is to use scaffolding. There we go. First time I've done that. Now I did get. Now uh, here I've I've gone and messed this up. And what happens? Have your chains in first. It'll all fill in. If you're not in creative or you don't have your scaffolding in place, that becomes a giant pain in the butt. Fighting with the bubble columns. 
have a temporary block sand, so now the water is going to flow. And we can carry on placing the rest of our, our water sources. Now I am in a frozen biome, so these source blocks up here are going to start freezing on me. So perhaps you want to get your ceiling in. Uh, and this is another area where scaffolding is going to help because you can go all the way down here. You just need to have a door to leave to breathe or uh, maybe some water breathing potions. There. And put our glass in. I remember which layer the glass goes on. Okay. Corner out. Now we're in here, you can walk through the scaffolding, get yourself some depth strider boots, and it's going to prevent this from freezing on me. Place our water in, all the way along the end walls. Both end walls will need to be just full water sources because it's going to have the farthest to push. Be very careful you do not put any water sources in either of these two spots so that you don't start flooding your area. Okay, we're not flooding. Not creating any more water sources, we're not flooding. Now we are skipping three in the middle. This is just to be lined up with your drop chute. So lined up with the drop chute on both sides, skip three water sources. That's going to encourage all of your mid-area here water to continue to flow to the center. Because this is a rectangle, it's not a square or a circle. There we go. And then the other advantage to having your ceiling in is now I've got something to place all of these water sources against. I just come along here, place them all in. In this center line, I'm going to move my structure pack up to get some coloring in, and you'll be able to see it better. Now we're looking at the roof. This center line of water that I just placed in is lined up on the edge of one chunk. It does not matter which chunk you line the edge up on because this is an even build. You have a two block center. You only need to put one block of water in. If you put two in, you'll have a dead zone. Uh, but either one will work to get everything to flow properly towards the center. I'm going to move the structure out of my way so we can see a little bit better. See the next layer up. There's the very simple redstone we've got in there. And carry back on. Oh, where's that hole I put? hole okay and now we will do this side without the guide of the markers of the structure so on either side of the drop chute we want to make sure we are not placing any water there and where our water source block is here we want to make sure we're not placing water in the two spots on either side of it I got my little Pillar blocks in to make sure I don't mess up. And water source all along this side. Skipping the two blocks, right? Sources. Now I can safely put these water sources in. Now I know I'm not gonna miscount. Okay, that's still flowing properly. Move our temporary blocks. Again on this side, Put our water source. Make sure I don't put the two there. Other side of our drop chute. Make sure I don't put the three there. And then make sure I don't put the two on either side here so we don't get our water sources. Fill in my gaps. Move the temporary blocks. 
Now, if I was in survival, I'd have to be running out a door or having some water breathing potions to make sure I'm not drowning in here while I'm working on this, but I believe we have everything in here correctly. So, toss that in. Center, and it's gonna fall down the drop chute, even though it is a two block center still not having any water heal will allow it to fall down. Okay. So to do then is just make sure that your roof is all completed and you'll see I have had ceiling missing there. So now that turned ice because I'm in the frozen biome. We'll just put some light there and it will melt eventually. And now we have to put our trap doors in. Grab the trap door. Move the glass from on top of these. And put our trap door in. Over here, and put our trap door in. One quick note about putting the trap door in it is directional. Uh, if you were building a piston trident killer, you would have to make sure the pistons push the right direction. Trap doors, it's a bit harder to see, but it does also matter. Um, so you can see I've got my sunflower here, that direction is east. I've got my pumpkin here, points to the northwest. Trapdoor trident killers always have to be pointing at the hinge on the east or on the south. Uh, that way you don't end up with a trident uh, when you come back to the farm after using it the first time and the second time it doesn't work because the trident just for one, one reason or another uh, doesn't update if the trap door is facing one of the other directions. Uh, because we are placing the trident right in the center of this, um, you don't have to worry about which of those two directions you pick. And it does help to have just something to stand on here. That way when you're throwing the trident, you're not going to accidentally pick it up quite so easy as long as you make sure you're approaching it from that direction. Now that's in, now you just need a solid block power in order to activate the trident. And then you start putting in your redstone. Run yourself a, a line of redstone to connect these two. And then find your, your center roughly. That there. Put your character in, put it on subtract mode so that it'll start cycling. And you're gonna want a repeater so that you have the full signal strength coming into the comparator. That way it's got enough power to actually make it out to your sea lanterns. That once you run any power into it, the trident start updating and any squid that spawn in here will start getting killed. Something I always forget to do, carried away with building the rest of it, I forget to remove my temporary blocks. Now we're going to come in here, and the reason why I've got scaffolding is I can still fit in here and run around, ceiling on, and I can grab an axe and I can instantly mine this. How I did that again. I can instantly mine scaffolding with an axe without hitting or instantly mining the soul sand or my sea lanterns. Uh, that just makes it a little bit safer for me to, to swing my axe around, get these all out of the way, let the water streams carry them off for me. But I am going to do some commands here and we're going to put some water everywhere. Scaffolding's removed, get the bubble columns in, the water streams are flowing in the correct direction, the trap doors are hinged to the east or the south, and you've got your very simple cheap little clock here to run the whole thing. The only thing there is uh, remaining is to 
run your water streams or put your hoppers in to collect your drops and go stand at an AFK spot. Hold your looting sword and you should be receiving oh, about 2,000 ink probably for one module, 4,200 ink for two modules here as long as you make sure to have four chunks uh, actual chunks, not measured distance, they have to be actual game chunks uh, between these two. Alright, well, I hope you uh, like that farm. I uh, don't think I forgot anything in here, but if there's anything that you uh, have any questions on, just uh, leave it in the comments and I'll be sure to answer it. And if any of you are able to improve upon this and get a little bit more out of it, I would uh, appreciate you mentioning that in the comments as well. Uh, thank you, and I hope you enjoy.